Um, okay, yeah, we're, Deronda's going to record as soon as I put this graphic up. That's great. All so, right. <laughs> That'll be a good break. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. But yeah, as, it, as anybody joins, if hears me, um, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, oh, we got Brittany. Hello, Brittany. Good morning. So I think, I think again, everybody kind of knows each other. Uh, we may not have to do in-depth uh, introductions here. Nobody changed jobs since we last saw you, right? <laughs> okay. Brittany and Jota are still doing adult ed. TJ still working for Sky CDC. Pamela and Priscilla. I know Jan is in the same job. <laughs> she better be anyway. Um, You're on mute, Jana. I, I think she's, she's talking, talking to someone. Else. Uh, nice. Okay. Don't do that. Oh, whoa, 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 that went too fast. Okay. Okay, so any news anybody wants to share before we get into our discussion today? Hey, Laura, any updates, things going on? Hello, Dana. I have something real quick. Okay, Frank's um, got the floor. Yeah, I just sent out probably about 40 minutes ago a, a flyer on the... Uh, a job open, well, some job postings. If you if you if you're familiar with Scottsville Road and the old Pizza Hut, they're under construction for a Mission Barbecue new restaurant. And the, the flyer that he just sent out, uh, there they have all sorts of position openings. Um, I'm I'm sorry. Thirty. Thirty openings. <laughs> so I, anyway, I sent the flyer out uh, about forty minutes ago to everybody. I, I hope you have it. And, Distribute it and post it and uh, do what you need to to get the word out for, the, for these new openings. Thanks. Is that a chain? Yes. 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 It, I went to the one in Nashville. Yeah, it is. It's it's really good. Good. Mm -hmm. I think what makes them a little bit different is they give a lot back to the community. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. very, very giving. I, didn't they feed the firemen and the uh, yes. I, I, a few firemen, policemen, and soldiers? Everyone's yeah, yeah, the the one one in the Opry Mills, I feel like the restaurant had like soldiers and things posted yeah, in they, there. They, they, oh, that's they, cool. They, it was a pretty cool. Yeah. I, yeah. Gave, I gave them their first declaration yesterday. You got to <laughs> give them a picture, though. <laughs> I got to give them a picture, too. Okay, yeah. You gave him a picture. I gave him a, I gave him a coin. Oh, that's so nice. I think they said they give away 200 a week, somewhere more. Yeah. Wow. Very generous. Okay. Maybe a future uh, partner team meeting. Yeah. Theme. I guess we got to swing in some employees first and then we can come, <laughs> come back for that ask after that. All right, who else wants to share updates, things going on in your program, your agency? No? Can I can I share one? You can, Miss Leslie. Thank you. Um, we we had our very first workforce collective uh, the end of December in Butler County. Amy Thomas was an attendee. And um, this is something that we're going to be doing, uh, sort of taking it on the road, county by county. The next one will be Simpson County in February. And uh, really, the, these are all designed for employers. They're meant for employers so we can communicate to employers uh, best practices uh, I would, even though like our turnout wasn't huge in Butler County, but I still feel like it was a very big win. Um, I feel like we're on to something and with this kind of event and taking it to each county. So, you know, it's, it's technically December news but it's carrying through to 2023. So Workforce Collective, uh, if you see, you know, if you see things on social media for your county, please share and encourage employers to attend. That, that is who, who we need. 
Anybody else? News updates? I have something that applies uh, to Butler County. Um, we're having uh, Mr. Tuck, our superintendent, is partnering up with me um, here at Butler County Adult Ed, and we're having a an open house for our Hispanic population next um, Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 until 5 p.m., where they can, you know, get information about our school systems for their kids and also get information about GEDs, uh, career college um, information and things like that, where they can have help not only for their children, but also for themselves. So that's next Tuesday and Wednesday from 12 to 5 here at Butler County Adult Ed. Amy, do you know Addie Hernandez at Sky CTC? I do not. Okay, she is their um, uh, Latino outreach specialist. So you might see if she can get in on that. Okay, what's, can you send me her contact information? I will. Whenever right. you get a chance. Yep. All right, thank you, Brian. Yeah. Yeah, because he's, uh, she's the recruiter, she's a specialist and she knows a lot about the scholarship and all the different processes, especially, especially for a uh, new American Spanish community. Yep, absolutely. Awesome. That's great. All right, Miss Laura, I see a hand up. <laughs> yes, I want to say thank you to everyone that has shared the Commonwealth Quarters um, socials and posting. So thank you for sharing that. We are still actively recruiting uh, students for our January 30th class. Uh, Commonwealth Quarters, Upskills and Reskills, Kentuckians for Web Development. Once they complete the 16 week short term training, they are able to begin working as junior web developers. Um, so please share commonwealthquarters.com. They can apply there and I will get in contact with them. So thank you very much. Great. Yes, I should have had a flyer showing for this. So my bad, Laura. You have my flyer. I do have your flyer. Uh, we never forget the job fairs because they keep coming. Yes. 20 plus employee employers will be here for this job fair on the 24th at the Kentucky Career Center. Um, send as many people as you can, new Americans, whoever you got, if they need a job. And most of them are going to be doing some, a lot of them will be going to be hiring on the spot, hopefully. Um, so please send as many as you can out there for this job fair. It's at the Kentucky Career Center on the 24th. And we have that as an event on Facebook. It will be very easy to share from your organization. Um, that is probably the one of the best ways to reach the masses is if you have a social media account, like I know Dana has one for Simpson County Literacy, if you share the event from that account, that, that is huge. But uh, by sharing the Facebook event, we're going to keep the list of employers updated and add other information. So that's, that's the place we want people to go to for more info. Let me um, just stop right here and ask, like, um, as far as you guys working with your clients to connect them to jobs, I know we sort of hit a rut in December. I mean, we just kind of chalked it up as we know some employers just kind of naturally with people taking breaks and HR, I think, especially being out, um, they weren't doing as much hiring. Are you seeing that it's been harder to get people into jobs um, or the same, easier? I mean, is this job fair going to be timely? Because maybe people you've been working with say they haven't been hearing back from companies or anything, or what? I don't know if it's going to be timely or not. I know a lot of the employers I work with specifically, um, most of them just for the end of December weren't hiring at all just because closeouts, end of year. Some of them had, uh, had uh, equipment issues, stuff like that. But the ones I've talked to over the last couple of days, are ready to hire the job positions. They sent me lists with what they're going to be hiring for. So okay. hopefully that helps out. <laughs> Anybody else want to weigh in? Yeah, I think anytime you have an event like this in January, it's a, it's a kind of a, a kick, way to kickstart the year. I mean, if people did have a downturn and not want to hire anybody for the holiday season, mm -hmm. which kind of allows them to get back into it. 
Mike, while you are here, um, I know you presented at our December board meeting and those that attended would have heard, but maybe not everybody else has yet heard. What happened this week that affected UI hmm. or the uh, UI world? It reduced from uh, 26 weeks worth of payments down to 12 weeks worth of payments. So the people filing claims that take effect on January 1st and going forward will not have that full 26 weeks worth of benefits available to them anymore. Plus they have to do more job searches. And they're required to do more job searches, which is another good thing about this event. It's the timeliness. Yep. So now they've got to have five per week and be eligible, you know, assuming they meet all the other eligibility requirements. So the, the attending an event itself is one of the criteria that they can use for fulfilling that. And then each, you know, they there's they apply to five of these employers or four more of these employers that gets their, their job search done for the week. Yeah. All right. Did you guys, is that news to anybody on the call or on the meeting here virtually? Did you guys not all know that about UI? Come on, Brady Bunch, don't let me down. Okay, well, <clears throat> it had been talked about for a long time. And, and unfortunately, I think UI recipients get targeted a lot for not participating in the workforce. And that's, that's sort of been the, the go-to crowd to go after, but there's a ton more people not working. And that's what Leslie was saying is these workforce collective uh, events, we're trying to identify the pockets of people in each county that are not working, that aren't even on UI. So um, we, need, we need the message to reach, not, not just the UI people, but the wider masses too. So we're hoping to do better education with employers this year to let them know how they can do better. All right, well, as always, if you're not already getting the emails or blasts or anybody new on your staff that you think needs to get these, um, go to the board website, go to the community partner team page and uh, click the I'm interested and the lovely Leslie will send you instructions on how to get to our password protected page, but it also gets you on Frank's emails. Um, and notifications. And then again, just a reminder that whenever you have a need or want to get the word out about something, you don't have to wait for this meeting. Do send that to Frank. That is, uh, we think, a better way to do it so it can come from one sender than uh, somebody who says, who sent that flyer about the such and such thing? You can always search by Frank's name and uh, your inbox and probably find it better that way. So. All right. Well, does anybody have any needs or immediate questions, something maybe proposed or put out to the group today? Besides more money, that doesn't count. We know everybody needs more money, more either for yourself or your program. Can I um, interject? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, sorry. I'm Pam, I'm with the Senior Community Service Employment Program. Um, this is a great program for people 55 and older, lower income that want to work. Uh, we place them at local nonprofits to work 20 hours a week. And the ultimate goal of our program, I'm not sure everybody's aware of this, is for us to assist them in finding unsubsidized employment. And we work with them one-on-one uh, -on -one to create the resume, the Indeed accounts, and various social media accounts, and fill out applications and find employment. Um, but in the meantime, they at least do have the money coming in from this program uh, while they're searching for unsubsidized employment. Um, and I'm always just trying to get the word out about this program. So any help I can get with that is greatly appreciated. And I'd, I'd be happy to bring anybody or mail flyers for you to put up at your workplace, bulletin boards or on social media. And uh, I would just greatly appreciate any assist with that. Great. And Pamela, just to uh, clarify, in my understanding is a lot of times those are part-time jobs. Do you also work with people to get them full-time employment? Um, if that's what they're looking for, uh, because this is a program for people 55 and older, generally that age group doesn't want full-time employment. Um, but if they do, absolutely. And I do occasionally have people that want full-time employment. Okay. It's just not the norm really. Sure. <clears throat> So again, if your agency program maybe needs help, maybe uh, a lot of times they do front desk and kind of administrative jobs, don't they? Um, Absolutely. Yeah. So it, Our job opportunities vary greatly. I mean, it can be a lot of things. Okay. 
Fantastic. Well, prepare to get chatty because we, <laughs> we got the rest of the meeting to talk. But basically, we just wanted to hear. I mean, we we haven't kind of taken the temperature of the group collectively in about a year and a half. I remember Leslie made a survey. A lot of you guys gave us feedback. Um, we were coming out of, you know, only virtual meetings and, and sort of, you know, there have been, there've been kind of different people leading the, uh, meetings we had originally our one-stop operator back then, Bill Waltrip doing it, uh, Leslie filled in, uh, to do a lot of work. And then as we, things started to open back up, we were like, okay, what can this group be? What can it do? And we sort of landed with, we were going to have different topics, um, and presenters come each month. And I think that's worked really well. I think a lot of you have been parts of those and been featured. Um, so, you know, it's, again, flavoring with employment opportunities, not necessarily um, maybe all the other programs that your uh, agency might provide, uh, but the ones that actually put people to work or assist people with employment um, and, and maybe even anything that might help employers so uh, that we can, you know, continue to play matchmaker in the world here of our workforce system. So I guess we just wanted to kind of toss this out. Uh, you know, what, what can we do? What can this group do and be maybe that we're not already doing and being? Uh, what ideas would you have? If you were in charge of the show here, what would you want to see this group do? Um, how do you think, you know, what, what ideas do you have? So there's no, there's permission to speak freely. We're all friends. Uh, if you say there, there needs to be a new host, I will gladly step aside and um, and let you do it. <laughs> so, but you know, we try possible? to keep it. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just wondered if it would be possible to showcase, like, through social media, even if we just did it on Facebook, like two particular programs um, every week. Throw it out there. Um, it, it would help get that circulating. And I mean, it couldn't hurt at any rate. And just like go through your list of partners in this, on this board. So maybe, maybe do something like a partner spotlight. Exactly. And just like pick one or two each week and just, and just keep doing that. Like as a rollover thing after you go through the list. I don't know. It was just a thought. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, honestly, I think one a week would probably give it more, it would have more impact if there was one a week. And just because it, it would make it seem like more special, like partner of the week or whatever, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, <laughs> I do think that's a good idea. That way we can, we can leverage each other and I think that as long as we're highlighting, hey, here's, you know, especially how it connects to the workforce to show, you know, this is, this is a service connected to the workforce. But I think, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I have a, a, a Facebook that I use just for networking. And some of you are on it, some are, I'm still building it up. And, and I try to um, share um, from the various resources uh, in all of my counties, not just Bowling Green, um, but specifically because I know we're all in Bowling Green, I think, or thereabouts in the South Central region. Um, and, and I mean, I think it helps a lot. And I just can't help but think that, yeah, if ever, and, and it's not very big, I don't have a, a, a huge following or anything, but if, if everybody would share it that sees it, that would just, it, it, it would help a lot, help get the word out about all of our programs. Absolutely. And I'll just tell you, we, you know, for some events, we are able to do like when we do uh, hiring events and employers pay, a big portion of, of those funds go toward Facebook sponsored posts. But I will tell you, um, organic shares have much more impact. And I'll give you an example. Over the Christmas holiday, I was consumed with this dog named Tuffy. 
and wanting him to get home. And I checked Facebook every day and I shared those posts. And, you know, if y'all know what I'm talking about, like the man had cancer and the dog was gone for two weeks, that, that, that had like hundreds and hundreds of shares. And that right there shows, oh my gosh, you know what? If people take just a second and share something, they can have a huge impact. I mean, seeing the video of that dog and that man get reunited, I was bawling. And it's like, I had no, I had no, you know, I had no dog in the fight, but um, it just shows the power of shares. And I can't stress that enough. Y'all have heard me say it. Likes, you know, likes are nice, but they really do nothing. You know, on personal pages, it's nice to like things, but shares for, you know, for things that you really feel are important. Some more sharing. <laughs> but I do like sharing the idea sharing. of the Partner of the Week yeah. Spotlight. Um, I'm going to look at the descriptions that we currently have. I may send out a short, like, hey, fill this out specifically for the partner spotlight thing. So, so I'm going to put that on my to-do list because I do, I do think that would be cool. Mm -hmm. Leslie, I see a whole talk show component to this. Where, you know, you're behind a nice, a nice With desk. With Brian and as running. the host. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I guess I see, I see you. <laughs> I'll be the, the odd sidekick off to the side. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Yeah. There are a lot of people that you already do. <clears throat> All right. Well, we're already rolling here. Who can top Pamela's suggestion? Come on. Now, I mean, as you guys think about, you know, I know some of some programs you guys have goals. Um, some that you set locally, probably some that are set for you. Um, <coughs> But, you know, as far as yeah, getting the word out, driving traffic, um, I know we try to share, and each of you do, you know, success stories and things like that, which are great. Um, so, well, what other what other things? I mean, does it does the format for the hybrid format? I kind of wanted to ask that. Has that been nice? Because we've been doing that for again about a year and a half now. Okay. Those of you guys joining virtually are nodding your heads. <laughs> That's hey, good. Brian. Yes, TJ. I hate to interrupt, but I do like the hybrid because sometimes I can't get there in person, but I can pop on um, to the, the video here, to the Zoom call. But I do have a, a recommendation or suggestion. Okay. So, you know, Deronda is so amazing. She sends out for the workforce board like the calendar for the entire year of the date so that they're already on my calendar when I accept. And I would like to see if we could do that for the partner meeting as well. Um, because sometimes I know Dr. Myers had mentioned, I'll speak for her, but you know, she gets a lot of invites to a lot of partner meetings uh, across a lot of organizations. And um, it's difficult sometimes to go back and weed through email or, oh, and it's real easy to overlook. So if we could do a calendar invite for the year for our partner meeting, so they would be on our, on our radar a little bit easier, that would be really great. So yeah. I'll, I'll let Frank take that one. Yeah, and you may, you may have say. to pay Frank with candy to get this to happen. So just heads up. Um, but Frank, what would you say? Cause I know that's been talked about in the past. What, yeah. what yeah. sort of seems to be the, the issue? It's good because sometimes um, just like this week, I, I should have put out the, uh, the reminder last week, but I, uh, I was out last week and uh, I put it out Tuesday when we finally came back in. Yeah, I think it's a good idea to put that on. So that every time I look at the calendar, I see those little dots there that says, this is a reminder, um, but they're not on my calendar unless I physically put it on there. So yeah, it's a good that's idea. That's true. I, my calendar has three separate partner meeting invites on it that so if we had one official it would be it'd be great i mean and one have, I the created. Zoom, have the zoom link yeah. in it yep. yeah yep. good suggestion yeah. 
And I know I personally missed one or two meetings because I overlooked the email and it wasn't on my calendar. So then I realized after the fact, oop, I missed that meeting. So um, I just, that would be really helpful. All right, keep them coming people. What else? Once a month, that still works well. Monthly is just right. Is that the right porridge? Okay. What I would like to throw out is, this is an, an idea, more of a, uh, a thinking tool. In a perfect world, Okay, we've got all these people together once a month. In a perfect world, what are some things that we as a group could accomplish? Speak now or forever hold your peace. So I, I will remind everybody one thing we did last year was we tried to do a resource fair, right? And we did that in July, I want to say it was. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the, the partners showed up. We just didn't have the public showing up because we just didn't have the reach. We didn't, mm -hmm. I don't think we were able to do paid Facebook ads right. or a lot of promotion for it. Um, we, we were talking about having food trucks out the parking lot at one point and making it a big deal. But we also were saying we wanted to do something instead of back to school fairs, but we ended up doing it kind of right before yeah. school came back anyway. So some of you guys get inv invites to go to local schools and set, you know, table at, at those kind of things. But uh, we said we would try to do those in different communities and counties, but you know, we haven't really brought that up in a while. I don't know if that's still got merit or... I think that's that's ultimately the big it kind of goes into what I was going to say the big challenge is I guess a marketing thing is everyone all the partners here have such great resources and there's just a lot of people just don't know about it you know even programs that have been around for years and years just the public doesn't necessarily know about it and uh you know the people that we could be helping you know, are just falling by the wayside because they just don't know what's out there. So, and, you know, there's always different strategies on how to improve outreach, but, you know, I guess that in a perfect world, we, everyone would know about uh, what everybody does here. Yeah. That kind of goes back to the sharing via social media. Uh, I was in Logan County yesterday and uh, sat down with three separate people where I've been really inundated with information about the Commonwealth coders. Uh, they had heard of it, but didn't know what it was. And I, and I showed the clip of you on TV, uh, <coughs> right? And, so, and I ended up sending that, I showed it to two people and sent the link to two others. So uh, that, you know, that just, I think we all have our pet things that we promote, um, but we can't all promote everything. So, uh, you know, some clearing house for all that information would be fantastic. And probably social media is, is that sharing is the best avenue for that. Great. Okay. Anything else? Okay, so who wants to take next month and be the topic? <laughs> um, no, I probably need to look through kind of the order we've gone in. I know we ended up, I think the, the veterans focus got, got last year and the year before. Um, and so, you know, there's other kind of populations and categories we probably haven't done or we could re-explore services to. We, we featured, um, you know, voc rehab um, and services to folks with disabilities recently. 
I think we had done new Americans towards the end of 21. So I don't think they got any focus in 2022. So we could probably do something and gather up some partners that provide services to immigrants and refugees. It's just, that tends to be more of a, a Warren County kind of centric, you know, population. Um, but Pamela, we maybe could just feature more about what your program is and give you kind of a long format to, to walk us through some of the things and showcase. Would you be up for that? Sure, I can do that. Okay, because I know you're you're consistent to bring up your program and kind of your recruitment needs month to month. Some of the data that we have uncovered looking at just a couple of counties so far, we have barely scratched the surface, but there are a lot of people that are 55 to 64 that are not in the workforce. Um, we've been hearing a lot of people that retired because of the pandemic, but people that could probably still work part-time and, and people that probably have barriers that your program could help with, I think it would be good to help get the word out about those kind of things, um, you know, and what educational requirements. I know there's a ton of people of that age range that don't have a GED or high school diploma. So um, I know adult ed would, would like to probably be involved in that too, so. You know, one area of interest that I've got because of the people that I see when I'm out in the counties, uh, I run into a lot of people that are, are either they're on disability, they are trying to get on disability, or they're, or they're trying to get away from disability. And um, what I would, I know that there are, are uh, incentives for employers to hire the disabled. And I'm, in theory, I know that, but in reality, I can't find that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to make that match. And or or, or what the, what the, the laws are maybe you know if there was somebody that could talk more about how to actually make that connection between yeah, those people somebody from New York yeah mm -hmm. and um, you know make that connection between these people and those employers yeah and yeah, I, I I can I help sent with an email the, to them yesterday I said I think we need to partner together better in 2023 and try to figure out how we can help expand your reach and an impact I'm sorry who was talking was that Bill that was me, Bill. Yeah, uh, I can help with some of that because the, the the tax credit that businesses get for hiring someone from OVR uh, goes through our office. So, yeah, so I can Do help employers with some of that. consider those real incentives? I mean, how, how seriously do employers take that? Employers I've spoken with, it depends on the size of the employers. I mean, the bigger they are, that little stipend means less. So it really helps the smaller employers better. Mm -hmm. than yeah. the they're the ones that don't know. They're the ones that don't have the exactly our departments to handle that for them. Yeah, and a lot of bigger companies, they, a lot of them use it, but they automate it, and it's just they they don't even really think about it. It's just a part of their process. And uh, yeah, again, a lot of the smaller employers that it could really benefit a lot of them, they just don't know about it. And trying to get the work it, again it goes back to marketing <laughs> and outreach you know there's so many resources out there that that just employers and individuals just don't <coughs> know about that they could be benefiting better benefiting from excuse me yeah it's funny too because a lot of these aren't that far deep into a google search right like it's mm -hmm. it's funny how many people say well yeah i didn't know about that it's like well have you ever typed in the word such and such on google because i'm sure it would show up <laughs> so, right you, like you You'd be surprised how many a decade two or two. So you'd be surprised how many people just don't know how to use Google. Yeah, you know, I guess they just wanted to fall out of the sky and hit them and in the head. You know, just simple. Uh, like I, I'm in. I, I've so many times I've had people ask me questions, and it's like, you know, you could have Googled that and got your answer five seconds ago, and yet you waited several weeks to talk to me about it. Yeah. So, but yeah. We need a strategy to get a one-stop center into each Walmart in our region. So, Frank, can you, can you work on that? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> now, okay, Brian, I have an idea. Okay. So, I'm a nerd, so just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, I really like, so I was wondering about, like, having some kind of economist talk to us, because I know we're kind of living in, it's really unprecedented economic times like we don't like post COVID we're not really sure what's going on and I don't I don't know if a lot of you are like us we see our student base and what they're here for just go up and down and up and down like we come in waves and we don't know how to predict 
what's coming. We don't know if people are going to come in here looking for jobs, if they're going to come in here looking for language help or GED, or if we're going to have a time when they're like, nope, I'm too busy working. I don't have time for this. Like, I guess what I'm thinking is someone who's more knowledgeable about that and can kind of box that to what, what we do and what maybe their ideas are about what we can predict is going to happen over the next six months to a year. What what are we going to see? What are people going to be searching for? What are they going to want? Um, what are employers going to want? You know, something like that. I don't know if there's anybody at Western or, um, you know, somebody like that. Because I know we had somebody come down here to Franklin to talk one time about the effect of the war in Ukraine on the economy. So they had some ideas about, you know, how that was going to affect some things like the price of bread and things like that. But I wondered about shifting that to what we do. Does that sound too nerdy? <laughs> Is that too far out there? <laughs> no, no, no. John says I can do that. <laughs> I can hit the nerd box for you there, Dana. We just, I just like to learn about that. And it's not just about numbers. It's just, I like to hear the information that other people have. Long story short, we may be in for some serious economic trouble over the next come several years. And then how does that affect us? That's the question. Like, what are we going to be looking at as far as our students? What do they need? What do we need to prepare for? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like the end of the world. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. It, who knows? Even economists don't know. They, they have all theories, but you never know. I think I think yeah I know it's very interesting where, where you're going with that Dana and I, I know as far as our workforce board is concerned or what we've been trying to do is again uncovering these pockets of people that just aren't accessing things especially the workforce but um, we had somebody John and I had a meeting and, and Josh our new data guy um, that after we got done meeting with him he was like well I'm more encouraged now than in any meeting I've been in with any elected officials or policymakers um, because that's been a discussion more about how to recruit people to come here. And we're talking more about who already claims residence here, but it isn't working. Mm -hmm. um, I used to hear this complaint and I used to say it <clears throat> like when I was in my senior year of high school, like I got junk all the time from colleges and, and places trying to recruit me, but I didn't get anything from WKU. <laughs> It was real interesting and that's where I ended up going and I got two degrees from them like so I kind of would say I guess they don't care whether I go there or not and and I've heard even other prominent people in the community say they never come over to our neighborhood and try to recruit um, so that's I think what we're talking about is how can we go to the different neighborhoods and, and, and bring these services um, I was just going to say would it be beneficial to hold the community partner meetings if they're free mm. and invite local you know local dignitaries or mayor all that stuff too so they hear what's going on or hear what we have to offer yeah and then they can pass that on to you so that is one idea i mean um it's kind of taking it to the next level but the board meetings we had at one point before the pandemic they were they were rotating around the partner meetings were more, always kind of more bowling green based right i don't remember if there was ever a partner meeting hosted in another county we, could, we covered 10 counties so you but, might as well get it get those kinds of calls at the same time. Yeah, but there is a way, I mean, I can pack everything that is used to this equipment in the room in a box and we can have these mm -hmm. hosted in different spots. Mm -hmm. I guess I'd be the one mostly traveling, but if you guys would play host, all we need is a room. Mm -hmm. People could, local people could come and then, and then all of the same people that are normally coming could join virtually. Yeah. But I think one important point, because I do think, I do think that would be cool. I do think that would be cool to do. Um, whatever county we go to, we need every single partner in that county to push it out and encourage it and personally invite big wigs and power, you know, power players, whatever. Yeah. Um, the personal the personal invite is still extremely powerful so i i'm all for doing it 
if we can get everybody to agree, yes. I understand if something's happening in my county, I'm going to really push <coughs> to get, you know, to get people here so we can, you know, so my county is represented. So that that's my ask yeah. if we do this. I think I think it would be I think it would be cool to try. Yeah. So Dana, let me go back to what you had said because you were talking about, you know, maybe anticipating what the client's needs are going to be or what you guys as a program maybe can do to, to switch or pivot or whatever. Um, are you seeing, because I know in in like GD land they were seeing this, but are you seeing um less people coming for a job like needing to get a diploma because they're trying to get a job or is it like are a lot of people coming because they know they needed to go to college but are you seeing less people coming to get it because they need a job or about the same or has that changed because we know some employers have dropped that requirement more in the last couple of years yeah you know what i'm seeing is more persistence they're staying with it mm. they're not moving in and out as much our student base has become more static like it's the same ones, but they're coming, they're finishing. Um, and then our ESL base is up, but there'll be other times when you, you know, so you might have um, another time you might have, like last fall, we saw an uptick in people coming in to do work keys, jobs, um, things, learning software, um, things like that. And then about November that just dropped off completely. So I guess what I'm thinking is like, we are, you know, things just come in waves. So, and also, um, you know, like, I know you can't really anticipate needs, but um, in anticipation of, of that, like, is it going to be, they need to learn some more job skills um, or, you know, is it going to be language? Um, and like you said, some of the requirements for GED have been released and then I know that we were like really busy with ACT work keys for some reason you know human resources had adopted that as their barometer of whether somebody could to do the job but then they've dropped that as well so we don't see that as much so I don't know it's just an idea of like what kind of wave can we expect hey Dana, or predict just out of curiosity are you are you tracking that or is that just sort of from memory like, is there a way for you to track that kind of information? Like how detailed? Because yes, I track when, like what month student hours spent on, you know, particular areas. And then, you know, what basically where we spend our money, like paying for a test or yeah. what they come in for. Yeah, I mean, I have like graphs, like which area is up or down. Um, the That's why I, I tagged the ESL was higher about 50% of our students last year alone were ESL completely. Okay. All right, well, we got some lot, lots of good stuff, I think, to work with. Um, so we'll firm up with Pamela and I'll see if there might be another partner because I always like to do that to see that there might be another one that provides sort of maybe you know senior services since that's sort of the theme there Pamela um, and maybe we can make it kind of more panel style um so it looks like to Dana's point you know we've got this workforce participation effort going on and we have somebody full-time focused on analyzing data he's coming through lots and lots of data and we were able to get some OBR data of uh, Brian reaching out with some information about the number of folks with disabilities served in Butler County. You know, if, if adult ed wants to share some information, I'm not talking about personally identifiable information, but I mean, we could incorporate any data you share into what is being collected and analyzed by, by Joshua, who's really an analyst. Um, we, we might be able to turn around and kind of spit back out some useful, you know, analysis back to you based on what he's looking at. Because he's he's trying to dissect demographic groups, age populations, education levels, and he's looking for all the trends and the, and the pockets that are out there and what's going on with people. So he 
he might be able to offer something back out to you. Uh, I'm fortunate that he came to innovation campus in the innovation space. And there's kind of a spirit of collaboration in that, in that area. But, yeah. So we'll, if anybody wants to share that, we'll take it and we'll, we'll share back out what we come up with. John, is this a fair uh, time to bring up the cross-functional team idea that you had? <laughs> we could spitball that or is it too soon? Maybe too soon. Too soon, okay. So what we were talking about, no, I'm just kidding. I won't say <laughs> <laughs> There's there's an idea brewing about how we I mean, might be able to. If you want to socialize the idea, I mean, go ahead. Okay. Well, it's your idea. You can go ahead and. I, I'm not sure they can hear me. I'm not even close to. Ah, uh, yeah, we might need to get past the mic or move it a little bit. Okay. Um, so just Brian and I have spitballed an idea. Uh, it, it's a, you know, for lack of better terms, it's kind of a cross-functional team idea. Um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do as a workforce agency is get out of our Kentucky Career Center more than we do. Go find customers and meet them where they are. And so we, we have, we've been working on that uh, as an effort with our uh, career team staff, you know, but what I think would be really kind of powerful and effective is if we could take a cross-functional team approach where it's not just career team staff going out, but I'd love to have um, you know, let's say, for example, we're going to go out and spend a half a day at a recovery center and meet with a lot of folks who have needs, right? They're, we're going to have a variety of needs. I'd love to take a team out there comprised of not just career team, but CDO, adult ed, OBR, Goodwill, Audubon, Housing Authority, you name it. I mean, whoever's willing to like pack up and take a team approach to this thing and go out there and spend half a day and, um, and just serve people on the spot in that way. So anyway, that's just a kind of a, a, a spitball idea that- Mobile resource fair. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like go to them with- uh, So anyway, um, not trying to saddle anybody with that, but if there's interest in that, please let us know. I mean, that's, um, you know, we, we want to be collaborative and we want to go serve people where they are. You know, if we're going to do it, why not? I mean, we could go and then do referrals back to you. We had always, you know, we're always going to do that. But if you want to join us in that endeavor, we would welcome you. Yeah, so that's basically for you guys. Most of you probably are well aware of the career coach on call, um, with Shannon. And so it's sort of that, that concept where you guys are kind of preparing, you know, laying the groundwork ahead of time, promoting it. Leslie can reinforce it through the social media channels to, you know, help try to get the word out uh, that you guys can share on your channels as well. But it it may or may not involve the same places that Shannon goes, like many of yeah. the adult eds and the libraries and things like that. But, um, you know, if you guys think it would be helpful, it's kind of the career coach on steroids. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to say Shannon on steroids, but <laughs> I just did. Um, but yeah, it's it's basically saying, okay, who who wants to be? Because I know some of you guys, a lot of you guys have services in multiple counties or you have staff designated in certain counties. Some of you guys have restrictions. Like I know Heath, you know, he has to stay kind of within the, the boundaries of Warren County. Um, so he wouldn't be able to make it over to a, a Butler County thing next week to necessarily go try to recruit new clients. But um, many of you guys don't have those restrictions or again, you have designated people. So um, you could, it's basically saying, hey, how could you get out of the office and go reach people, like John's saying, where they're at? And, and we would need to kind of identify, would need help identifying where those places could be um, and the frequency that that happens. Um, so Shannon, how many days, how many work days are you out? I mean, is it, it's more than 10 because, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, a month. I was gonna say. I don't know. I'd have to look at the calendar. I live and die by the calendar. Yeah. But, um, I I did a. I mean, I think Matt knows because I, I had to do like a travel. Uh, Matt did a uh, a travel estimate for January, and I said it was gonna repeat. So I I've got that. I mean, I could send that to you really quickly. That's 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 what we're gonna do. Yeah. But I'm not. You know, I at least half the days. Um, you know, I'm. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So an Avengers team for workforce services and going out 
if you think of a better name, you're, you know, go for it. No, Leslie's already thinking. That's right. That's <laughs> this, is right. The, this is the end game. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think it's a good idea. You can definitely count Audubon in. Great. Maybe you guys would be outstanding to have. Okay. <coughs> All right. Well, we'll wrap it up then. Um, let's see if I have any other slides. So yeah, basically, who's got next? I think I think we got an idea. So before Deronda or Frank or somebody sends you that calendar invite, please go ahead and mark your calendars for two 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 three, because that will be the next community partnership meeting at eight thirty Central Time. And that takes us to the end of the meeting. Anybody have any final thoughts, concluding remarks? That's at 8 30. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the board meetings. 9 30. Keeping you on your toes. And... Uh -huh. <laughs> so look, look for an email from me. Um, very short, like sort of surveyish form. Um, so I can start doing the community partner spotlights. All right. Thank you, everybody. Until next time. See you soon. Bye-bye.